Now, I don't know if you guys have seen, you should all seen the agenda. It's only me that didn't see one because it's on a different system, which I've just learned about today. So thank you for that update. Um, welcome. Um, we've got a, a packed agenda of bits and pieces to discuss today. Are any of you new to the group that wants to introduce yourself? So I've, I've recognised uh, quite a few of your faces. Any new people here that want to say hello? Hi. Hello, Karen. Hello. Um, I'm new to the group. Um, so hello, everyone. I'm Satna Patel, I work at South West London and St George's Mental Health Trust with Debbie. Um, and this is my first meeting for Value Makers. Ah, oh, welcome. Welcome. OK, who's next? I can't see. Unfortunately, I'm on three machines and I can only see the person that's got bit that's talking. So who's put their hand up? Number one. Off you go. Can't. I'm in. Hello. Hi. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so my name is Amin Hussain. I'm from London Northwest University Hospitals. And yeah, so I just joined and this is my first value maker meeting. Brilliant. I, I can now see everybody. Kevin, you're next. <laughs> uh, hi, all. Kevin Garner, uh, Associate Director of Finance at Nelft. Um, Sunit is our, our main lead, so I'm just joining just to see how, see how it's all fitting together. And also, I know Karen from the London wide SDN. Yeah, network. good to see you. <laughs> Hope you enjoy your new role. Right, okay. So those are all new people. So my name is Karen Hamilton. I'm, I'm the lead here, but the role has changed a lot actually. It's changed just for the new people that's come along. It's changed from you know being much more active. We used to do much more things within London, and I think there was a a change. I think we got a bit of fatigue where certain things should have happened that weren't happening. We think this is a much better format. So what normally happens is we have a kind of a pre-meeting to discuss what we're going to discuss. And then we have the main meeting here. And I've learned today that actually everyone's emailed out um, and so they can see what's on the agenda and they, and they attend. I think the big thing for us is to make sure whatever we do here is disseminated across, across London so people are aware of what's going on. All right, so moving on. Um, I know Joanna very well. <laughs> She's going to do um, a presentation for us around accreditation and, a bit, and embedding its practices. So over to you. You're on mute, Joanna. Thank there you. There you go. Falling <laughs> at the first hurdle. Um, <laughs> yeah, so recently, uh, Lewisham and Greenwich NHS Trust was um, successful in its level three accreditation. Uh, and I was asked to come and do a bit of a presentation today, I think really looking at the journey, um, what we've learned, uh, what we would do again, what we wouldn't do again, um, and hopefully give a few hints and tips along the way. Um, and really, I guess, to bring a bit of real life context to the accreditation process. Um, I'm happy to take questions during or after the presentation. I've got quite a lengthy slot, so um, I'll check in at various points through the session just to see if there are any questions. Um, because I'll be sharing the slide deck, I don't think I'll probably be able to see you when you raise your hand. Um, so if you do have a burning question, just shout. That's absolutely fine. A um, little bit of background about me. So I've worked in the NHS for what seems like forever. I started um, at London Ambulance Service and I spent 16 years there in the clinical education department. I then moved over to... Lewis and Greenwich, spent two years in strategy and then joined the finance team in 2022. Um, so, yes, I am going to share my screen, shout if anyone can't see it, and then I'll just, as I say, I'll just work through the presentation. There'll be some pauses at various points um, and you can ask questions and then also questions after. That sound OK? Right, the next bit. It always makes me really nervous when I have to do like sharing screens. <laughs> You'll be <Right>. fine. <laughs> there we go. Okay, can everyone see that? Yeah. And can everyone hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can see and hear you well. Perfect. Then I shall begin. Um, so as I said, I um, spent 16 years in London Ambulance and then moved over to Strategy um, and I've only recently joined the finance team. So I think 
for me, coming from a non-finance background, I remember being um, completely surprised by the world of HFMA, one NHS finance. I never knew any of this existed. Um, and then probably slightly overwhelmed by the level level two accreditation process, which was mid-flow um, when I first joined. I, and I, I was probably very much on the periphery of that process, uh, really until the end. However, I was able to be drawn in due to my um, learning and development background. And really, I think, when I was thinking about the these slides, um, it made me consider when I was asked to lead the level three accreditation, what's what's the hook that you're able to draw staff in with? Um, how do we make it something that's meaningful for everyone within the team? The premise around this is that obviously if um, if it's meaningful, then people are more likely to be engaged and in, and and invest in the process. Um, and you'll hear me say this about a hundred times as I'm moving through the slides. This is not something that anyone can do by themselves. It really is a, a collaborative, collegiate piece of work. Um, so it's really really important that you draw in as many people as possible because those are the people that know what they're doing in the day to day. No one person can sit all over everything. Um, so this led to the what I've called making it real in the day to day. Um, and so to start with, we tried to break it down really, I think, into three simple definitions. And those were, I guess, our beacons. So each time we got lost or confused, we went back to those. Um, so for level three, which states that the organisation must demonstrate an overall culture that is initiative and consistently supportive of the development of the wider improvement of the NHS finance system and beyond. We really looked at that in terms of, well, what do others see? So every time we were considering evidence to support the criteria, we would go back to this and think, OK, so how does this link into the wider organisation? What do they see? How do they benefit from our growth and learning? And how does this help us help them and in turn helps us as a finance team to do our job better? Um, within this, I think it's worth noting that the achievement at level three um, requires access through level two um, and you've got to show significant growth between level two and level three so therefore it's really important that you keep what was said at level two in your sites. Um, I'll just pause there and see if anyone's got any questions in relation to the I guess the overall principles around level three and, and the accredit accreditation process. I've made the assumption that everyone's got an awareness of the FFF accreditations and are moving through one of the levels. OK, I, I have a question then. So how much of level two um, was needed to get to your level three? So you talked about you talked about, you know, that it was important to have it, but was it building on? Was it completely different? I'd, I'd say it was probably half and half. Um, the emphasis changes. So um, an example, maybe if you're looking at a PDR process, level two is really about making sure that you've got the process embedded across your team, that PDRs are happening, everyone understands what a PDR is, et cetera, et cetera. Level three, you're really then looking at, OK, so everyone's having a PDR. PDR. How does that link into our departmental objectives? And those objectives then link into the wider organisational needs. So it is relevant, but it's not the same. Thank you. Um, and, I, and, and I, I guess that's where we've got the level two. What do we do internally within the team that we can provide evidence? Level three. OK, so we're doing the thing, but actually, so what? How does how does that kind of help 
help the wider organisation? How do we link in with, our, for us, our South East London partners? Um, yeah, it's, 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 it feels like it was a so what factor, I think. Anyone else got any other queries? Okay. So, I was very lucky in so much as Tolu, who led on our level two accreditation, had laid down some really excellent foundations. Um, for me to build on with the level three. But what I've tried to really do is break it down into four key areas that um, to focus on when you're um, looking at your approach. And I think these are relevant, whether it's level one or level two or level three. Um, choosing the right platform um, in which to present your submission. Um, is really, really key. We used a platform called Smart Sheets. Um, for us, the benefits were that it allowed us to view and compare level one, two, and three. And we could actually attach evidence against each standard that we were looking to support. So I think when you're thinking about a platform, you need to consider something, one, that enables multiple users to collaborate on, two that you're able to store evidence on and ideally one that allows you to look back um, because you will need to be flipping between level two and level three. We also try to think about it from an assessor's perspective. So ease of access, ensuring that they don't have to search for information. Um, an analogy is if you think of the job applications that you've shortlisted and the difference between someone who is set out against the job spec, how they meet the criteria um, to, to someone who's just written three pages of narrative and actually you're trying to go, go through and hunt for that evidence. Um, the more that you can do to help the assessors find that evidence, the better. This also means that actually, if you're looking for others to review and um, give external to support support in terms of the narratives and the evidence that you've provided, it's much easier for them to do that. Um, cohesion, and again, in, in terms of the submission, it's really key, I think, to have an FFF lead within the team because it's important to have someone with an overarching view of the process who understands all of the standards and can actually make those connections across work streams. Uh, we found that often there are initiatives that hit multiple standards, um, but if you only had one person plugging in whatever that initiative was to a particular standard, they wouldn't necessarily recognise that, oh, OK, actually it fits X, Y and Z. Um, it's really important that you're getting continuous feedback from the team as things will develop organically through the process and that may well then suddenly fit into a key area. It's really important that you've got one voice when developing the narrative. Um, this doesn't mean that one person does it all, but there does need to be one or two key people sitting over the process and pulling that information together. Um, as I talked about earlier, forward planning. So if you're doing level two now, start to think about the next steps for level three and have a trajectory for growth. Um, when we were doing the level two submission, we started with um, the career, career development group and there were multiple subgroups that sat under that for level two. Um, <clears throat> and they led on various pieces of work. This, this, this then informed the, dis, the areas for discussion at our 2022 away day, which then informed our strategy relaunch, which informed the next away day. And all of this loops together. So I think one of the things that's really key is it's not a linear process, but um, it's a continuous feedback really of, um, Review and development as you work through. 
<laughs> and the last one is really communication. So where you can bring in the senior team and subject matter experts to review the narrative that supports the standard. No one person has all the information, but I think what we found is that everyone's got a nugget of gold to share that actually enhances your submission. It's really important that you create the timetable for the assessors early on and keep communicating with them to be as organised um, as possible, in particular around the assessment day or, or the assessor day. Arrange a briefing with the chief executive, CEO and budget holders prior to the day to ensure that, that they understand what the ask is. Um, why the finance team are actually going for the FFF um, accreditation and the associated benefits. Um, <laughs> I would also say be brave and don't cherry pick the interviewees. Um, so this, this whole process is about improvement and we felt that you can't improve without actually knowing where you can do better. The next slide is just really a roadmap, um, pulling out the key milestones from our level two success to our level three submission. So point two, um, following level two success, we then had our first face-to-face -face away day since COVID. And this was used as an opportunity really to, I think, reflect and reset and consider how we as a team wanted to move forward following the level two success. Um, in particular, for our team, as I would imagine many other teams around that time, there was a significant change about working pattern and environment. Um, so we were all in one space, but we were away from the hospital. And there was also the introduction of an agile working policy. So all of these things had impacts, both positive and negative to consider. So within this away day and look back, we also considered our finance strategy. Um, and then in December 22, we had a finance strategy relaunch. And we set up five working groups to underpin the delivery of that. This, in this, we really defined how we saw ourselves as a department and our vision to move forward. Um, so our definition was that we were empathic, empathetic, inclusive, highly skilled, focused on improving the health of the community that we serve, and that we were looking to collaborate and adopt best practice to continually improve and, improve and innovate. We use this vision to create five strategic working groups to underpin these aspirations. So we have a wellbeing group linking into the empathy, EDI, inclusivity, learning and development, highly skilled, public health and sustainability linking back to community, technology linking back to innovation and quality improvement linking back to en enhancement. Each of these groups from January 2023, we set up monthly meetings for each working group and um, those working groups then present at the monthly team meeting on rotation. These really set the building blocks for the development of um, our level three submission. Um, and the role of the FFF lead then was to feed in inclusion of FF criteria or the standards in the relevant group to support the development of those work streams. I'm just going to pause there because I realise I've talked quite a lot. Um, and again, I'll, if anyone's got any any questions relating to the to the flow of that. Everyone happy? 
Yeah, we've got some nods, so. Yeah, <laughs> is it all making sense so far? I think really what I'm trying to do is is, is paint the picture of, of how we flowed from level two into level three. And so we'd set, we'd set clear strategy for level two, what we as a finance team really understood that we wanted to do in terms of moving forward. We then following the success, allowed ourselves the opportunity to review that and see if that direction was the one that we still wanted to go in. Following that, we then relaunched our strategy and then basically made an expression of interest for the level three accreditation. And then within our strategy, the relaunch and the new five working groups, they were then tasked with supporting all of the streams of work that sat under level three. One of the key bits of work that we needed to do before we really kind of got into the, the meat on the bones, I guess, of providing evidence for level three is um, do a gap analysis between level two and level three. Um, we broke this down into three steps. So we looked at what did we say we did in level two? What are we still doing? What have we progressed beyond level two and what has slipped? We then looked at aligning this with level three criteria. And basically within that, where were our quick wins? What required a further nudge? So we were nearly there, but we just kind of needed to push it along. And what was a developmental piece of work? And once we understood this, we then allocated these out to the various strategic working groups. And this is where the platform you choose to develop this submission really comes into play because there is such a huge amount of information to pull together and cross-reference. And you need to have something that's simple and works for you, for your internal reviewers and your, and your assessors. And I think within that, do not underestimate how long this, this gap analysis piece of work um, takes and it's really important that you make sure whoever is the FFF lead that they're actually given protected time to do this. Um, it's, it, can't, it, it can't just be a little add-on on the side. We originally planned on an April 23 submission but actually decided to push back to August as we felt we, we weren't really showcasing us as we wanted to be seen and I think this is because we underestimated that 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 gap analysis work we thought that we could just kind of jump in and start developing the narratives and providing the evidence for the level two standards but it is a little a little bit more complicated but that said doing that gap analysis work really really benefits the submission um once you understand that then as i say senior leaders in the strategic working groups were tasked with specific work streams, we uh, expressed our um, intent to submit. Um, and that's when you start having dialogue with the assessors. And I'm not just saying this because you're on the call, Karen, but assessors are your friends. So it's really important that you you link in and have initial meet up and open up that line of, comp um, of communication because they are there to support you through the through the process. Um, and again, it's really important that you work out your submission timeline early on in conjunction with the assessors, as you do need to get dates in key people's diaries. For example, your chief exec, uh, chief finance officer, senior budget holders. Um, another key thing is ensuring that you've got mechanisms in place internally and that senior, you have senior st support so that in any areas that you're struggling with, that they actually can be pushed a bit harder when needed. Um, a lot of the, the role of the FFF lead, I guess, is kind of chivying people along um, and getting them to, to pull together the pieces of work that you need. 
And again, talk to everyone as everyone will have something to contribute. The final six and seven, um, again, don't underestimate the time that this aspect takes. Um, <clears throat> so this is really pulling together the fruits of everyone's labour. And it's where you need that cohesive narrative, which draws all the threads in um, so that you're able to show a complete picture. In an ideal world, I would say you'd want three people. So one person um, concentrating on the evidence submission and another who's pulling together the mechanics of the day. And then one that's pulling together the final reports and getting sign off. It is doable for one person, um, but it's a mountain to climb. Um, and equally, you, you've then got no resilience within that process. Um, it's really important that you understand right at the beginning the various pieces of work that you need to submit um, alongside the, um, the the wider um, narrative piece with the standards and the evidence because it isn't just that on its own. I've not referenced the assessment day um, on this but I'm happy to talk to the end if anyone's got any questions about that in particular. Harness people power. This is key. Um, the accreditation process, where possible, should be blended into business as usual so that one informs the other. Um, I'm not going to go through this list, but there's there's a wealth of things that people within the team can do that all support your accreditation. Um, and again, going back to the beginning of the presentation, really push people towards the things that they're interested in because you're going to get much more out of it um, or out of them rather if they're if they're working towards something that really kind of sparks that fire. Um, we really tried to hone in on this theme in our 2023 away day. And actually this was after our level three submission. Um, but in order to keep that momentum going, so we did things around a day in the life of a finance business partner. Um, we then looked at um, individual teams taking the per taking the idea of the perfect ward and we looked at teams working together to come up with their perfect week. Um, we also asked members to pledge one thing that they would like to change. Um, and again, linking it back to the FFF accreditation um, and that continuous journey. I think it's really, really important that in relation to staff well-being, there's there's a huge amount in the FFF level three accreditation that links back to well-being and what you are doing within the finance team on a day-to-day -day basis to support staff's well-being. But I think in regards to FFF, there's actually two aspects to consider when we think of well-being. One is maintaining the well-being of the staff through the actual FFF accreditation process. And then the other is the initiatives that can be the FFS process, I guess, really can springboard and you can then embed as you move through the accreditation process. Um, in terms of supporting staff as you're going through the accreditation, it's really important to remember that everyone's busy and everyone has the pressure of the day job. So you need to give people appropriate leaving time to develop and deliver. Um, and also ensure that whoever is the lead has the senior support to unblock areas if needed. Not everyone will have the same enthusiasm. So again, it's wise to pay to people's strengths and interests when you're asking for something extra. <clears throat> and as you get closer to the submission and sessions, the assessors day, um, make sure everyone understands what's going on. So we did this through a spotlight at monthly meetings, which tied into the key milestones. Um, we also tried to link achievements, new incentives, progresses, etc., back to FFF, so that the team starts to make the questions between, um, sorry, the connections between the tangible action and the standards. 
So more often than not, people are aware of things are happening, but they may not make the correlation between that and the accreditation. Um, and the more you can do this, this also serves you well when the assessors come in and they're interviewing staff members because actually they they already know that the reason why this happened um, was because of that. We did a briefing for all staff before the interviews um, to give an overview of the what was happening on the day, the day's timetable and the types of questions. And then following selection of staff, we offered a further uh, briefing and Q&A session. As what we realised is that actually a lot of people are quite nervous about the assessors coming in. And so it's important that they understand that they're, they're not being tested um, and also that it's confidential. Um, with regard to the development of wellbeing amongst the actual teams, uh, the strategic working group and FFF, I think, became great tools to focus the team on the wellbeing agenda. And so really some highlights for us were during that process uh, was around PDR and one to one conversations. Um, so we there was a real focus on moving away from the tr transactional. Um, and this was supported through sessions at the monthly meeting on what do you want from a one to one and asking staff to wear two hats in that session. So one is a line manager and one is a direct report. Um, we've done multiple sessions on wellbeing. Um, we've got a dedicated finance wellbeing page on SharePoint. We grew our wellbeing champions part um, and we also set up a corporate social responsibility initiative where each member of the team is given four days per year to take out of the office to do something beyond the day to day. Um, FFF, I think, really was a springboard for a lot of this. They were ideas that people had, but, but actually in doing the accreditations, we, we kind of forged through with them probably at a much quicker pace than we perhaps would have done. Um, so I think I think it's a really great opportunity for, for you to get get going on all those good ideas that maybe sit on the back burner a little bit. Um, I'll just pause again there to see if anyone's got any questions. Amy? Hi, just a quick question uh, regarding uh, well-being. So mm -hmm. uh, aside from um, to myself, I'm a health and well-being champion uh, through ONF. Uh, so some of the resources are readily available on like the um, ONF website, um, as well as we really have the trust, we will have a, a well-being and engagement team as well. Is mm -hmm. there any other resources that you were able to access uh, to help generate ideas regarding a health and well-being strategy for your finance department? So we've got um, within the within the trust, we have um, well-being champions group. Um, and there is a monthly forum where all of the wellbeing champions across the trust meet. So that is quite a good platform in terms of bringing things in that can then can then be taken back to individual teams. Um, NHS England have also. Um, send out a sway. Uh, it's not on a monthly basis. I think it's about every three months, um, which kind of has ideas across the um, across across the country. Um, what, one thing that's really, really good, actually, is the uh, well-being. It's next week, isn't it, on the 23rd? The, um, is it an away day? No, what's it called? Karen, can you remind me? Oh, I can't remember what it's called now. I'm so focused on thinking and writing my questions down. Sorry. <laughs> it is one NHS health and wellbeing conference, um, which is happening next is next, yeah, it is next Tuesday. 
that's a really really good um day there's loads of ideas there um i think probably it's actually looking looking within your organization and seeing what things are happening outside of finance in relation to well-being um what we also did is we've got one of the, the five groups within the strategic working group is the well-being group um and so there's probably there's about 12 members we've got in that group so i would say setting up something like that within the team mm. um is a really good idea because then people people are bringing in various ideas and bits of information there's it's almost i think with well-being especially because it's it's became a bit of a buzzword there's almost so much information that sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming and so actually i'd say start reasonably simple survey monkey across the team to see what um what what things people would like to see happening and then just grow it. I mean, we started with things like putting a wellbeing board up in the office that people could write on um, walking groups, and and then and then slowly slowly grow it. I think and and this year, what we want to really focus on is the idea of collective wellbeing, and actually the fact that everyone um, can make a difference and everyone has a responsibility in terms of that 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 kind of well-being agenda but it is I think it is quite a slow burner and equally some people will be hugely enthusiastic about some things and others not so much and it's almost like lots of different offerings and then people have got a, a, a range of things to choose to engage with or not and I think that's probably as much as you can do really does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. And can I add to that? There's also a lot, you know, I can see, you know, there's a lot on one NHS finance as well. There's a lot of information out there on health and wellbeing. Um, and you can act if you can get to that directly going to one NHS finance or for London, you go to the FSD website. There's links there as well. Um, how to do that. Renwick, you've got a question. Um, hi, Joanna. Um, hi. I guess my my question was around you your question around um the buy-in of certain staff you know that mm. there's some staff that might not always be up for new tasks so i was just wondering how you um got the buy-in from some of the some of those type of staff members <laughs> you won't get the buy-in from everybody i think um so <clears throat> When we developed the uh, session around the PDR, within that there are uh, three team object objectives. One of those objectives was around meeting uh, the corporate social responsibility um, initiative. The other objective was that everybody had to join a working group. Um, so. As as a as a minimum, I guess people, everyone has to attend the working groups. Everyone hears what is talked about in that working group. The idea being that people could choose which one they join. So if you your interest was technology, then that was the one that you join. So hopefully, already you're you kind of got a bit of a win there because someone's actually joined a group on a subject matter that they're interested in um you know and then through that group they're contributing because those five groups were um linked into the key elements that we wanted to move forward in our strategy that also then linked into the level three um Honest. that's you know Honest. yeah i think Oof. that's probably as far as you can take it really um okay no, thank you. And and can I add to that? From an assessment point of view, it wasn't imperative. I think Joan's already alluded that I was one of the assessors on, on theirs, but it wasn't imperative that everyone was engaged and involved. It was imperative that everyone was aware, you know. So so yeah. the big thing is awareness actually to make sure people are aware of what's available to them. 
we can't make people choose or or be involved if they don't want to be involved. But I think it was really important that people were aware of what was available to them. And I think that's the key. Um, Because if you're going to try and get everyone on board, it's never going to happen. Right. So there's going to be people that just for whatever reason will not be a part of it. So it's really about the awareness for level two and level three. They're aware of what's out there. They don't have to partake if they don't want to. But it, it was seemed to be inclusive from an assessment point of view that people chose not to be a part of it but was aware Mm. is that Mm. fair Joanne yeah 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 yeah. and I think that's where those kind of bringing it back to the monthly meetings at the key milestones again it's about that awareness at least as a bare minimum everyone understands what's happening when it's happening why we're doing what we're doing and what what the offer is around that um so lessons learned, not an individual task. Um, again, get engagement and buy-in is really key from the senior team. They have to support you through this. Um, we used working groups. Doesn't You don't have to do it like that, but actually, again, because it's not an individual task, it, it worked quite well for us. Um, Allocate responsibility, have a backup plan, use your value makers and your face representatives because they will be able to contribute a huge amount. Um, Even if it's just having an awareness of things that are happening. Um, And again, as we talked about, not everyone will have the same motivation. So harness what you can, when you can. Don't underestimate the ask and starting early, planning, timelines, and being organised is really, really key. Going back again to the choosing the right platform that's going to work for you when you're doing your submission and works for the assessors. Um, <clears throat> read the template and the guidance document and keep revisiting that criteria and 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 just understand what's required outside of the template. So in addition to the to the if you imagine you've got 36 standards that you need to um, provide evidence for and write associated narrative. In addition to that, you've then got your finance business continuity plan, your annual report and an introductory report into the organisation. Um, make sure you've built in enough time to get those done and right. And then, as I said, get to know your assessors and build the rapport. Um, From a departmental perspective, so I guess when considering the benefits, I've also considered how we link this back into our strategic intent um, and the goals that we as a department want. So we keep the momentum and it doesn't become a moment in time because also as well there's the re-accreditation so it's all very well getting the level three but what you don't want is level three to then be whipped away from you um so i think in terms of uh greater exposure through that increased exposure it's enabled us to continue working to develop our relationships with the stakeholder clinicians and the corporate leads through the um, true business partnering model and also our corporate social responsibilities days um, through cross collaboration collaboration um, we can then look for that continuous improvement of the fine financial um, position and um, what we call our IERP delivery so that's improving use of resources program um, and be sipping of money um, and so this is d- driven by enabling stakeholders skills through improved working practices and processes um, and then points one and two directly link to how we expand our financial knowledge to the wider organisation through training um, so again, by developing those relationships and that cross cross collaboration, we can actually really improve on our processes and 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 how we and interact with a wider organisation. The key goal is really, I think, how we make finance more accessible 
and visible and develop an organisation with the right tools to make more informed decisions. Um, through our working groups, we can harness areas of interest and are supporting us to, to, to really sort of pivot towards ensuring the finance function is supporting um, public health goals. And then there's an EDI focus on improving diversity and senior leadership roles, community engagement with local schools and colleges and how we make our recruitment process more accessible with a focus on neurodiversity. Um, and then we're also looking to automate processes to support the internal finance team and external colleagues. Um, so again, it's about how we build those internal and external networks. And then through those networks, um, we can individually and collectively really succession plan for our internal staff. Um, what we really want to be seeing is development and growth within the team. And, and, and so as part of that, the next stage for us is really looking at wider professional accreditation that sit outside of um, financial, so project management and contracting. And then I think the last benefit we, we've seen, which is really the setting value based goals, which rep represents the wider team, that is overarching. So that provides um, through level three and the work that we've put in place, I think it's, it's really providing an enhancement of the finance department culture. So now our focus is on continuous improvement. Um, looking back at staff survey results from 2022 and then really I think what they tell us is there's a really key focus on well-being recognition and and internal development within the team so again for us I think the level three has been hugely beneficial even if it was just about actually kind of sorting sorting through our thoughts and getting getting a really clear understanding and actually these these bullet points sit within our annual plan and our and our, our strategic intent for 2024 going forward. I think I've probably talked enough now. <laughs> um, happy to answer any questions in relation to the level three process where we're sitting at now. Um, I don't know where everyone is at in regards to their own organisations um, and the accreditation. But yeah, I, I'm happy to open the floor to to any questions that anyone may have. Any questions for John? No. So just to answer your last question there, so we know that in London we have all achieved our level one accreditation. We do have some organisations that have level two and we have very few, about three or four, that have level three. So the drive this financial year to the DOS um, is to make sure that everyone goes for their level two application today. But I think one of the things that Joanna made, made very clear today is that actually it's important to plan your level three. So if you've done all that work for level two, you really need to plan level three as well because they they really sit um you know together and work really well mm. together. So as as explained in the slides, I'm sure John would be happy to to share the slides. I think one of the biggest things that we found here um that I found really helpful for Joanna and the team at I did my first assessment with them and it really is about organization. So for level two, it's about how you organize your files and stuff. And they made it so easy for us. And I think there's there's a lot of things that people are worried about, especially with level one. It's about, oh, my God, we're not doing this or we're not sure about this. But that was an internal assessment. And as long as we're very clear about the documentation, also bringing into play what your local organisation is doing. So there was a lot of policies out there that were already embedded in the trust that we used in finance. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's really about supporting each other as well to make sure we all get to where we need to be. So I'm sure Joanna would be happy to come back 
or happy to help out. We also have Ronan Richards, um, who's been involved and I think has been contacting each individual trust about when they think they're going to go for their level two, because it's been mandated that we need to try and get many of us um, to level two. Do you all know that? Do you all know that we've been mandated to get level two? <laughs> Some of you didn't know. OK, so please go back to your DOFs, because that is something that apparently has been mandated. Oh, Kevin. Yeah, I was just going to say Roland's really useful. He yeah, gave yeah. us some really great feedback as we were working mm. through the level the level two accreditation process. Mm. Mm. It's really it's, important to use him. Sorry, sorry, Joanna. No, I was going to say, especially. Um, so, for example, we got stuck on the apprenticeship standard because. That's not something that particularly works well for us. Um, and so working through any 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 of them that are particularly problematic, um, Roland's really good and 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 there's a sense check and he's he asks the difficult questions before you're basically putting it forward in front of the assessors. And so he's really, really useful. Um if anyone, I'm more than happy to share um uh the uh, PDF of what smart sheets looks like if anyone's interested in seeing how how we actually laid that out and how that worked for us. Um, but I definitely think whatever platform you do use, it's useful to have something that you can have multiple people editing at the same time. Um, and it's got it's got that collaboration aspect in it. Um, so as I was writing a narrative, I'd be pinging it off to one of the DD, um, one of the directors to just get them to sense check it. Uh, and uploading that evidence as well, because there is the, you will have a huge amount of evidence. So for those of you that are going for level two or level three, you know, really use Rodon. I think we've actually um resourced him to support us and it's not about reinventing the wheel there's a lot of stuff already out there that we're doing and i think sometimes we forget we're doing this um and remember don't worry too much about the staff that don't want to be a part of this but they just need to be informed and they need to be aware of what's going on so what happens normally at the assessment john didn't say is that you know we, we normally have a list of of all the staff teams and we randomly pick people um to have a, a conversation with and it's it's probably you know um people always see, seem to think we need to get all the positive people in front but it's not about that it's about awareness and understanding about what the offerings are how we're engaging how we're developing our staff how we're looking after their health and well-being um you know and if there are issues like you know joanna mentioned about about the apprentices then you know there's a way to address that so please don't think you have to tick absolutely everything before you go to it because it isn't it's it's not a tick box exercise it's about what are we doing what can we improve on you know um to, to make things better for our team and sometimes you know there's been lots of talk about collaborations so we are concerned about organizations where there is a very small finance department and they, again they've come up with ways um that you can still get your accreditation even if you're a small team under under 15 10. all right so no questions for joanna i think i've done them all for you listen thank you so much for coming along today um and i'll move on then so i can't see megan so who is who is doing the um, I'm covering for Megan today because she's at um, an event, so I'll be giving oh, the updates. OK, I know if you get it right. OK, <laughs> sorry about the name. <laughs> yeah. Over to you, over to you. So Thank you're going to talk you. to us about the updates and engagements in the region. Thank you. Yes, so um, I just have a couple of programme updates to begin with. Um, so from the National Finance Academy, we have upcoming talent, talent management uh, workshop series. Um, so a new talent management strategy and model were recently developed. Um, by our finance community in the summer 2023 and these have been put into workshops for you. Um, the workshops aim to bring together NHS finance line managers, senior finance staff um, and colleagues seeking development through the talent management process. Um, these will be through MS teams and they're limited to 25 people per session so there are a limited number of spaces. Um, these workshop dates are Tuesday the 30th of January and Monday the 12th of February. We will be running another session in March, but this is yet to be confirmed. Um, if you are interested in booking onto this, um, you can email one NHS Finance and we will get back to you um, if there's still spaces available. 
Um, so from the Finance Innovation Forum, we now have 119 finance innovations published, with seven of these being from the London region. Um, out of these innovations, we have put together a couple of showcase uh, sh uh, sessions. So if you're interested in attending these, um, we have one on February the 6th, and that will be focused on the staff survey. And we have one on February the 15th, and that will be focused on the induction timetable. Um, from Future Focus Finance, we have a couple of um, events coming up. So we have the Health and Wellbeing Conference on Tuesday, the 23rd of January. We have a Demystifying NHS Finance event on Wednesday, the 24th of January. We have a CV writing workshop, uh, which is aimed at bands eight to nine on the 31st of January. Um, we have an interview hints and tips um, for those going through organisational change on Monday, the 5th of February. And we have a spotting and preventing burnout on Thursday, the 15th of February. Um, just some general updates. So the applications close for uh, the Career Progressors Development Programme, which is for band five, five to seven staff um, to help finance staff improve, in, in, improving sorry, <laughs> their finance leadership development. Um, and this will close on Wednesday, the 31st of January. Um, everything I've just mentioned, I will put into an email and circulate all the links um, to, so you can find out some more information on this. Um, my final um, update is just about um, our new value maker pages that we have on our One NHS Finance website. So I'm just going to run um, run it through with you guys so you just know what everything is. So I'm just going to share my screen. So um, is everyone um, able to see this? Yeah, we can see it. Yeah, perfect. So um, we have created some regional pages um, in hopes for everyone to find information easier. So on our NH Finance website, if you go under Value Makers, um, so this is our Value Maker page, you can sign up to become a Value Maker here. And then we now have um, Regional Networks page. So if you select Find Out More, um, you can go to find your region, so the London region, for example. And on this page, it will tell you how many value makers are in your region. Um, it will also tell you upcoming dates um, for the next network meetings um, with a link under here to the our events page to book on to these meetings. Um, there's also a link to our YouTube channel so you can watch previous uh, Value Maker Network meetings. Um, there's a playlist of this, so they'll be in one place. And then we have information about our leads and um, their job titles and their trusts. And then we also have a bio about um, the lead as well. So um, hopefully that will be quite useful for you guys to look on to our next events. And we also have um, a national showcase sessions as well um let's try to get that to load up so this takes us to our youtube channel and this is just a playlist of all the showcase sessions we put on so far and we'll be adding everything else onto there as well so um that is all the updates from me thank you any questions about the updates no is it possible then if you can um, send that out to everybody even all the London value makers so they're fully aware and I, I think that's I went on it yesterday by accident actually and I just think it's much better and much easier to find things so thank you guys um, for doing that okay let's move on then Charlie over to you London Finance Academy update Hiya. Hi. Um, let me just quickly share my screen just a couple of updates from the region Um, so first off, just a quick overview of the London network engagement numbers. So there has been a lot of data work taking place within One NHS Finance over the last few months um, to ensure that our records are up to date and accurate. Therefore, we have gone slightly down in numbers in some areas. However, this is mainly due to levers or duplication of signups. We have had increased engagement in our finance and clinical educators, along with our health and wellbeing champions and sponsees, and recently seen a number of organisations become level two and level three accredited, which is great. 
And just a quick update on the Health and Wellbeing Network, we are looking to start a regional network for our champions so that we can outline clear objectives and support a reg at the regional level. ONF nationally do provide um, some great offerings, however it would be good to create a regional community to support and offer um, further wellbeing opportunities. So we are looking to launch this in February and we do have some health and wellbeing champion training coming up um, on the 8th of May if anyone is interested in signing up to the network. Um, and then as part of the work that the Academy is doing in regards to championing EDI, um, we are delivering a series of EDI events centred around challenging perceptions and driving meaningful change in the workplace. At the end of last year, we ran a great session um, from the author Sophie Williams around race and gender allyship. And our next upcoming event is around knowing your bias. Um, so in this seminar, we will be exploring types of bias, um, but also aim to provide a fresh look and perspective on bias and to embrace its positive impacts and challenge its negative elements. Uh, so our facilitator will be Edward John, who is a chartered accountant with over 25 years of experience in senior NHS finance roles and is a founding member of the FFF EDI initiative. Edward is passionate about EDI and ensuring equitable workplace for all. Um, so if you are interested in attending, just send me um, an email and I can book you a place. Um, so many of you will be aware of the NHS Finance Insight Placement Scheme run by One NHS Finance. The scheme aims to attract diverse talent from local communities served by the NHS in the finance sector. It provides a 12 month experience in an entry level band two finance role, allowing candidates to develop new skills and gain on the job work experience. So the scheme originated from a pilot initiated in London last year and has since expanded to all seven NHS regions in England. London are thrilled to once again be hosting the scheme and have nine organisations signed up for 2024. So we are now looking for volunteers to visit schools and career fairs in their local areas to promote the Insight Experience programme alongside other opportunities such as the sandwich placement year that SDN host and the organisational apprenticeships available. Uh, therefore, in the next few weeks, myself and the London Insight Working Group will be reaching out to value makers to ask for volunteers. So we will put you in contact with the schools, arrange a date and time and provide you with all the necessary resources and presentations needed. Uh, we are encouraging those at all levels to volunteer and you are more than welcome to team up in pairs or threes to do this. We had some great volunteers last year, so it would be good to have the same again this year. Most of our 2023 applications came from the Insight Scheme. Um, from the Insight Scheme were from these school visits, so they are really vital to the scheme's success. And then lastly, I just quickly wanted to mention the Innovation Programme, um, as Eva mentioned earlier. So through the programme, the Innovation Forum are looking to collect innovations that allow finance teams to be more efficient and provide a better service to the rest of their organisation. Um, as a region, we have only submitted seven over the past year, and I know that London have some really fantastic work taking place. Um, so we really want to hear from every NHS finance team across the region so that we can learn from each other and inspire teams across the country. So even if it's something small, as long as it's making a positive impact, it's an innovation worth sharing. Um, so I just advise you to check out the innovation library on the ONF website to see what's already out there um, and then hopefully inspire you guys um, to make your own submission. Um, so yeah, that's it from me. Brilliant, Charlie. Thank you. There's a lot of stuff going on there. I, I think it's really important as value makers that we try and get involved in the schools. I think we're all really struggling with our lower levels, apprentices, band fives, and I think we just need to work. So I'm happy to volunteer myself. I've already done it for I do it for ACCA as well because they they're recognising, um, you know, their 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 numbers are dropping. So. If you can, or if you know people that are interested, please do take part. It's really important that we save our career <laughs> in finance. Is there any questions for Charlie about any of that? No, I'm sure Charlie will add it to the, the information that goes out for everyone to have a look and see what's going on. All right, so thank you so much, Charlie. Is there any other business about anything else that people like to raise or talk about here today? I didn't receive anything. Is there any issues or concerns? Yes. Catherine, yes, hello. Hi. Hi. Hi um, thanks, Charlie. Yes, sorry, I just wanted to ask the, the insight. Um, have you got nine? We can just about hear you. Um, are you able to shout or speak? 
Sorry, sorry, that's that better. better. Sorry, apologies. Um, <laughs> hi, Karen. Hi, Charlie. That, thanks for that. So, sorry, I just wanted to ask. You said you had about nine trusts doing the Insight program. Is that nine trusts in London? Yeah, yeah, across London. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think oh, okay. we've got 40, 43 across the regions. OK, be good to hear um, from a trust that, that's using that, because I don't think we're using that um, at, at Guy's. I um, mean, it, it does sound like a good scheme. Um, I think Guy's have signed up for 2024, as far as I'm aware. But I'll, oh, have we? I'll, okay. have to, I'll have to double check that. OK. I'm a, I'm a sponsor for that scheme. Now, I, I, they're really amazing. So the one, I think she's at Northwest London somewhere. And it's just amazing when you allow people the opportunity to to come in because not everyone wants to go to university, not everyone's sure what they want to do. And I think it's an absolutely brilliant service and a, a good thing. So I think maybe, Charlie, we should have a look and see who hasn't signed up and see if we can encourage them to sign up to increase the numbers. Or are you limited by funding as to how many people you can have per year? Um, so last year, because it was a pilot, it was fully funded. However, 2024, it's we have a um, one NHS Finance resource, which is helping uh, deliver the programme, which is being funded through one NHS Finance. However, the salaries will be now covered by the um, host organisations, which will be right. a band to salary. Yeah. OK, so you all know it's not a lot. <laughs> Any other questions? No? OK, any other business from anybody about anything they'd like to raise or want us to look at in the future? So one of the one of the good things about this this group and this new format is that if there is anything that you'd like to raise or something you'd like to discuss in a future meeting, please feel free to email me or, or email one NHS finance directly and we'll try and get it organised. Because I think we've we've worked out that these groups work a lot better if we're sharing information about what people want to hear. We do have a separate meeting about them, but you know the, the, the whole idea is that we assist you in doing what you need to do in your particular trust. So if there is anything out there that you don't want to raise right now, feel free to reach out to me and I'll make sure it gets on the agenda. Is that okay? Oh, oh there's a hand. Sorry, Kevin, just saw your hand. Yeah, so just... I was just going to say that probably at the next the next meeting, Sunita and I might be able to do something around how far we've got with our automation processes then, um, just to share what we've sort of looked at and if it would help anybody else, because we're just at sort of starting that journey with our IT at the moment. That would be great. So there you are, guys. We've got one, one thing on the agenda for the next meeting. That would be really good. Yeah, I, I think that'd be useful to share. Is there anything else? No pressure, Sunita. Yeah, no pressure. <laughs> You're going to be there to support, I'm sure, Kevin. <laughs> is is there anything else that anyone wants to raise? No? OK, well, I'm going to give you back at least 16 minutes of your time <laughs> before your next meeting. But thank you very much for coming along today. Um, I'm sure it will be sent out via email um, and hopefully we'll see more of you next time. So thank you so much for today. Thanks all. Uh, thank, so, you. Yeah. thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.